Hey Measuring Hero, Jay here. Today, I thought we would again take a little bit of a deeper dive into the world of scanning electron microscopes because, well, to be honest with you, I find it extremely fascinating and I wanted to come back around and learn more about it. To help us out, we brought in Constantine. Constantine, thank you for taking us on a, another nerdy journey into the world of scanning electron microscopes. Appreciate it. Great to see you, yep, Jay. Yep. So let's see how nerdy we get. Yeah, let's <laughs> do it. <laughs> Where do you want to start? So I would say we start by talking about microscopy in general. Sure, sure, um, sure. As we are standing here in front of a digital microscope, mm -hmm. this is our smart zoom. Right, right. And, um, and this uh, is a light microscope. This right? is not a light microscope. This, this is a di digital microscope. Okay, okay. And next to that one, this is actually a compound light microscope. Got it. We call and um, but um, as we prepared something here for you, yep. Um, you can see here on the screen the surface of my fractured sample. Okay, okay. A broken part. A broken part. Yeah, exactly. And now the question in failure analysis typically is uh, to find out why this sample broke. Mm -hmm. So for some reasons it, it did, did break and um, um, it's important to know who has to pay for it, right? <laughs> Someone always pays. <laughs> exactly. Cool. So uh, when you look at something under the light microscope or yeah. under this digital microscope, yeah. uh, what are we able to find out? So I typically like to uh, compare microscopy with uh, diving in the ocean, okay. if you want so. So imagine you sit in a plane mm -hmm. and look down at the ocean. What would you see? Uh, blue water, right? A bunch of... Exactly. So not maybe much. <laughs> maybe darker or lighter bluish parts, mm -hmm. um, but not much more than this. Yeah. So we could compare this with our situation. I, I look at the sample okay. uh, in my hand and what, would you, what are you seeing? Uh, topography of whatever is on top, some ridges, exactly. nothing too crazy. Uh, so it's, it's gray, it's dark gray, yeah. and uh, it's not super interesting. Huh? Yeah, yeah. But actually, um, if we compare this with the ocean, and ocean can be very fascinating if we, mm -hmm. you would dive in deeper and explore all this beauty in the ocean. Sure. But what would you need to do? Go deeper, right? Put on your diving suite <laughs> and jump in the water, into the water, right? Got it, got but it. before we can jump into this material uh -huh. and start swimming, we obviously need something, some help, so a microscope. Got Without, it. it's not possible. Yep. And um, if we compare this with this digital microscope here, um, we would be able to swim at magnification levels um, of maybe 200 times. Okay. So okay. you can magnify things as we do here by 200 times. Okay. So if we compare this with the ocean again, you would start swimming at the surface of an ocean, start maybe see some rocks, stones, lar lar larger things. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, doing the magnification or the microscopy on a, with mm -hmm. an electron microscope, you really dive deeper to the bottom of the ground uh, of the ocean right, right. and start seeing the smallest things like plankton sure. shells and uh, etc cetera, etc cetera. okay so i know then in order to go deeper and understand i love the analogy of the of the ocean to go deeper we need other set of tools right we exactly. need diving equipment not you know swimming equipment uh, and that is the scanning electron microscope can you take us on a tour of basically how this does it? How does it sure. happen? So if we start looking at this this, this big beast, and <laughs> <laughs> it's I was Game of Thrones, right? <laughs> I, I would start maybe with with the plinth here. So here okay. uh, below we have a lot of <coughs> electronics and the vacuum system. Mm -hmm. And um, the most important part is uh, here on top. So here is the electron source, and okay. here we generate the electrons. And in between, you can imagine a lot of condensing and focusing mm -hmm. and very mm -hmm. important, important that you accelerate the electrons as we have to bombard the sample which is down below here right, with right. high speed. Got it. So we generate electrons, exactly. focus them, yeah. speed them up yeah. and bombard a sample <laughs> with electrons. With high speed, yes. Okay, okay. I'm following you. 
I think we have to dive even deeper again and yeah. um, have a look at this, Kay. how this looks on physical level. Okay. Maybe, okay. Yeah? So you can see here on this dashboard, these three main mechanisms mm -hmm. I just um, talked about. And the first one is that one. So the, the, the result uh, information product is a secondary electron. Mm -hmm. And how do we get to this? Um, so you can imagine this is a, an atomic, uh, an atom uh, from the sample okay. itself, from the bulk material. And as we shoot with our primary electron from top at the sample, we kick out an electron. Okay. And this is a secondary electron, as you can see here. This is the first, this is the first one. Okay. The second mechanism is called backscatter electrons. Mm -hmm. This is the, the result, the product. And here we scatter um, the, the, these electrons, which are not touching or not hitting an electron. Mm -hmm. They will be scattered around or scattered by the atomic nucleus. And the third mechanism is that you again hit an electron. And here you will get a gap, right? Okay. So yep. um, there's space uh, where which can be filled, and this will be filled with an outer electron shell, which jumps into this gap. Okay. And by doing so, characteristic X-ray radiation shoots out will be emitted. Okay. Which gives the information again about the material about the element. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let me wrap my brain around what I think I'm looking at. When in the process of uh, uh, bombarding a sample with electrons, <clears throat> three things happen, uh, or at least three things happen, right? One is one uh, will actually smack the, what you call it, a shell of the electron and will displace a uh, 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 an electron and we can measure that secondary electron and it exactly. will mean something. The other one, it will miss all the electrons, go into orbit, if you will, around the nucleus and then come back out and we can, based on where that flies, we learn something else about the part or can see something. Yep. And then the other one, based on uh, its ability to displace a, uh, uh, the, 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 the electron will come in, displace something, and based on that uh, process of doing it, it will emit an x-ray, which we can read exactly. and find something about it. Collect with detectors and generate an image out of this. So and the okay. quintessence is that we get an image out of this mechanism, okay. another image out of this, and one very characteristic, specially unique image out of this. And, and therefore, what, yeah. okay, go ahead, no, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm wrapping <laughs> my brain, it's, this, is awesome. this is awesome stuff. What do we get, what do we learn about these parts with each of these methodologies? So um, we learn a lot about, um, yeah, this is simply at the end giving you di three different kind of um, appearances. Okay, okay. Which are, uh, very, very valuable, for example, for fail analysis. Okay. You have to have the full picture um, of your, of your uh, material mm -hmm. and therefore you have to do this exploration and um, maybe we um, have to jump into the yeah, images yeah. as seeing as believing and then you directly see what the result let's is of it. these mechanisms. All right, Jay, so let's have a look at the results. Okay. So we talked about three different kind of um, detectors with two different kind of um, appearances mm -hmm. in, in an image, right? So the first one, the second the electron will give you a topography image. And right. this is important for seeing the surface structure of all the hills and valleys, right? Mm -hmm. um, the second one, as mentioned, gives you the contrasty image. So this shows you where to find objects of interest, where is a maybe interesting part. And the second detector shows you is simply the material composition, the elemental analysis for, uh, in this case, in the fracture area, we uh, can see the material consists of um, tungsten, silicon, carbon, and uh, molybdenum, and, and so on. So right, this right. is the real material composition and all informations are com complementary. Sure. And for investigative research, as we did today, mm -hmm. all of them 
are very valuable and important to, to sure. get and to sure. gather to, to bring together in one contextual um, workspace. One snapshot, if you will, like you say, we, we, we dove into that ocean and understood what was underneath there. I think I learned something today. What I didn't realize was that uh, all of these pieces of information, I knew they existed, but I didn't realize you could actually overlay them and give us context as to what else we were, we were looking for. In my head, scanning electron microscope was just something that to make an even smaller thing bigger. I didn't even realize that you could not only get other information, but overlay it. Um, I mean, it's a really powerful tool in, in this Evo over here, right? And this is all our Zencore software, so. Exactly. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, so what I think I learned, and thank you for the visualization of the kind of looking at the ocean, because microscopy is a, a, the ability to look at an ocean and observe at one level and see some things, and that might be interesting, or enough, might not be. Uh, but if we drill down to the world of light micro microscopes, we can see ocean, uh, uh, the, the top of the waves, but if we really want to get in there, we can take a tool like the Evo here and uh, with secondary electrons really get the, the really small topography. With backscatter electrons, we can really focus in with uh, nice high contrast images. And then with x-rays, really get an understanding of what the material composition is all in one shot, all overlaid, really able to get in there and figure it out. That is absolutely amazing. I no idea that we could do that. Super high resolution. It's yeah. still a great, extreme, good depth of field, which is important for, for this kind of investigation. Absolutely. That's crazy. Constantine, thank you for taking the time to show us uh, uh, this deep dive, if you will, uh, uh, into scanning electron microscopes. So I really appreciate it. So you will, will awesome. really welcome. Awesome. And for you out there, hope you also enjoyed this uh, little look. And don't forget to stay safe and stay healthy. We'll see you next time.